In this video, I'm gonna share some editing tricks, particularly selecting items without moving the edit cursor, something that I use quite a lot and is really helpful to know how to do. So this editing trick is something that I use quite a lot in my video edits. Let's say I put in a title and I want to copy it to another section of the video or I want to move it, or sometimes I have a graphic that I want put in and I want to move it to a specific spot. This is great for sound effects editing as well, where you have a particular frame of the video you want to spot something to. This is just so helpful once you know how to use it. And it's something that I haven't seen done in any other DAW. Being able to select an item without clicking on it. Um, Reaper has this advantage that we can click anywhere and move our edit cursor, but that's a disadvantage when you actually want to keep your edit cursor parked somewhere. So these actions are really handy. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes on art, design, productivity, and more. It's one of my favorite places to go to learn. It's really focused on learning. It's a combination of video lessons and practical class projects. Most of the classes are less than an hour and broken up into smaller chunks, so they fit your schedule. You don't have to take everything all at once. Great for learning new software, picking up skills on software you already know, and whether you're advanced level already or just starting out, there's something for everyone there. For a limited time, use the link in the description of this video for a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. If you want to continue on for a full year, an annual membership is only about $10 a month. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's look at what's built into Reaper already. So we've got this action, select item under mouse cursor, and select item under mouse cursor, leaving other items selected. I would suggest setting up this as I and shift I, so shift to add to selection. And this works pretty well. These are actions that you need to have assigned to a keyboard shortcut because it needs two things. It needs your mouse position and it needs an item underneath it. If you tried to run it from the action list, it's not going to work because your mouse is over the action list. So it needs to be assigned to something. You just point at the item you want to select, you press the button, and then it's selected. Can't be any more simple. From there, you can do things like cut and copy or move actions. So I'll show you that now. I'll, I'll just assign this to the letter I. So if I point my mouse at, let's say this item here, press I, I can select it just by pointing at it. So let's say I needed to move this item here and I want it over at this position here. So um, with it copied, I can just hit paste and it's going to paste it to that position. If I want to change tracks, let's just undo that. If I want to paste it onto this track at this position, I just need to select the track. Let's say I want to select this item here, press I, with my mouse hovered over it. I press C and then I press V and that's pasted it over to my edit cursor. So this is really helpful when a thing like a drag edit where you wanna grab a certain item and then move it over, that just doesn't work. Like just because it's so small, you can't see the source and the destination at the same time. So these sorts of actions are so helpful for my video edits. One of the actions that I use along with this a lot is item edit, move position of item to edit cursor. I find this one so helpful. To put this into use, I'll put my edit cursor here. I press I to select. I have that action assigned to Y and I press Y. And now that item moved to my edit cursor. So you can imagine that being um, like a, an impact sound that has to hit on a certain frame of the video. You just point your mouse at the uh, sound effect press Y and it snaps over to that frame that you've already put your cursor at. So helpful. And by the way, this works with the snap offset. So it might be a little bit difficult to see here, but the bottom left edge of an item has this marker, the snap offset. You can actually see it better when I'm not, when I don't have it selected. But if you drag this around, you can choose a particular spot that this item will snap to, and it doesn't have to be on the grid. So I'm gonna hold down shift and I can adjust that. And so now when I drag this, it's that point that gets snapped to the grid. This point, not the, the left edge, gets snapped to the grid. So um, when we're using that action, uh, if I press, if I move my cursor to here and press Y, 
it snaps that snap offset to that position. Again, this is something I find incredibly helpful in my edits. The reason I don't use the select item under mouse cursor action that's built into Reaper is because it doesn't work with grouping. So if you have grouped tracks, it won't select all of the items in the group, which means you won't be able to copy them all, you won't be able to move them all. So for a long time, I was using a custom action that would select the first item and then select all the other items in the group. I recently changed that into a cycle action, and I'll show you that here. So in the cycle action editor, I called this select item under mouse smart grouping. And so this is going to focus the range view, and this is just going to help prevent any things like where you copy an item, but you're actually copying the track. And then when you paste, it pastes the track, it duplicates the track and you don't want that. So uh, this focus arrange command should make Reaper only do editing actions, not track-based actions. Then we've got select items under cursor. If the next action is on, if options toggle item grouping override is on, that's the main toolbar button for grouping. If that's on, then it's going to select all the items in the group. And if it's off, it doesn't do anything. It, it just keeps that first item selected. So you can use the main grouping function to select either just the item under the mouse or with it on all items in that group. That makes a big difference. And then I've, I've made another one which only swaps out the second action in there, select item under mouse cursor, leaving other items selected. So this is your add to selection. So I will share both of these cycle actions in the description of the video. So I'm just going to set these up for my editing. And there we go. So I've got that set up. Let's go to another project. Let's group these. So I've got these two items that are the same length. I'm going to press my group action. So if I have no items selected and I got my mouse cursor here, so I'm going to press I to select. And that's selected both of these items. And if I press C and then V, it's going to paste those over here where my edit cursor was. Let's undo that. And this time I'll press X and that's going to cut. I'll press V and that pastes. And if I want to move to another track, I can click here. And that first item is going to go to the selected track. Now let's uh, unselect this. I'll press my shortcut for disabling the main grouping, which I have on Shift G. So that's this button here, the chain link. Um, when I press I, it's going to only select the first item there in the group. And I can press Y, and that's going to move it to my edit cursor. One other example of this is, let's say I've got this item here, and I can click on the edge of it to move my edit cursor. I can select this item underneath it, and then press, uh, press Y and that's gonna move that over to there. Or let's say I want this one to move over here. So I press I, I don't want this here, I'm gonna press Y, and now it's over here. So um, just by pointing the mouse and then do is using a couple keyboard shortcuts, I use I, Y, X, and C quite a lot with these. So um, yeah, there's a lot you can do with this. This is something I use a lot in my edits, couldn't edit without it really. Um, I always end up using this in one or two places in most edits. So I'm happy to share these tips with you because I'm, I'm sure that once you start using them, you'll find them helpful as well. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can become a channel member. Um, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blogs or Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.